Hey folks, Pastor Craig here, welcoming you to a midday moment for a Friday. Woohoo! Made it to Friday. That only uh, that only means a big deal to folks that have to work every day. Your kids go to school every day. So, those of you that are home watching today or don't have to go to school, Friday is just another day uh, on the calendar, I suppose. But uh, it is a glorious opportunity to welcome our friends and family uh, to another Facebook moment today, a midday moment, and uh, it's a joy to be able to come and spend some time with you and try to encourage your hearts and and. Uh, teach you a little something from God's Word, pray with you, and I and I thank you for some of your comments. I know there's some folks uh, that, that are faithful to watch every day, and I'm thankful for that. I've been surprised lately by some folks that I necessarily wouldn't have expected to be watching, and that was a true blessing. But, so wherever you find yourself, if you're part of that North Carolina crew or Florida or our Fredonia, Kentucky connection, uh, we, we pray that God will be right with, right with you and be all that you need Him to be today. I want to sing a song for you. And while I'm singing, I want you to get your Bibles and I want you to find Philippians chapter 4. And when your eyes fall on Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, you're going to be encouraged because uh, some of you know that verse from memory. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. But I got, uh, I got some troubling news. I may uh, disappoint you today when I tell you what that verse really means. It, you may look at it well, you will, I believe. By the time we're done today, you're going to look at Philippians 4.19 in a whole different light. But that's not a necessarily a bad thing. But let me sing this song for you that the Lord brought to my mind this morning as I was preparing for this. Always been a favorite of mine. I hope it's a blessing to you as well. He's all I need when I just need someone to talk He's always there to hear my prayer each time I call him. And all my needs, he supplies my thirsty soul. He satisfies, he's the Lord of Lords. He's all I need. He comforts me when I'm weak. Every pain fills my deepest longings time and time again. He's my soul's inspiration, my heart's consolation. He's my everything. He's all. Father, I give you all glory and all praise today for your provision. 
be all that we need you to be is our prayer today. And Lord, I know our heart goes out to many today that are bearing up under great burdens of life, tending to families, Lord, and family members that are truly battling uh, life-altering situations, medical needs, and, and uh, physical ailments. And I pray, God, you'd comfort them. I pray, God, you'd be the, what everyone needs when it comes to finances and to uh, healing and to uh, family dynamics that need help, that families that need direction, that need answers to questions of life. Lord, if nothing else comes out of this midday moment today, let the truth be heard loud and clear that you have indeed promised to meet all of our needs. We're counting on that, and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do for us. So bless this moment, I pray. Forgive me of my sin. Allow me to be a vessel that should speak for you, speak through me to the encouragement of those listening today. And I'll gladly praise you for it all. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 So hopefully you found Philippians chapter 4. It's going to be our focal text today. As we continue, probably wrap up, I believe, maybe one, I'm not going to say that. I, I think I'm done and God shows you something else. But we're going to stick at least one more day on this Friday to our series answering the question, can God or God can't, depending on how you apply that into your life. I think there's a common element that uh, unifies every person listening to this uh, media cast today. Every person around this world, and the simple fact is that we all have needs. And uh, the truth before us today, the question before us today that I'll be striving to answer is, can God really meet my needs? And we all know what, what it feels like to be in need, be it material or emotional or physical uh, there's there are spiritual needs that we face in various seasons of life. And what do we do when those needs arise? Uh, even though we know the Bible tells us not to, we know it's never been God's will for our lives, the first and most natural reaction is for us to worry. And we all know that. We've all got family, friends. I, I give Miss Tammy a hard time all the time. She's the queen of what if. You know, it's easy for us to worry and and look at the situations around us. Uh, and really, that's that's the fleshly side of us. Um, for as long as man has been communing with God, he's asked that question, can God really meet my needs? There's a, there's a passage of scripture over in Psalm 78 that references when the children of Israel are still uh, living in, in uh, desperate need of God's provision. Uh, he talks to that time when it says, they spoke against God and said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed and he gave bread also. Can he also provide flesh for his people? So even the children of Israel battled that question of life, the same question that maybe you're answering right now or asking right now. Can God really meet the needs that I'm bearing up under? And that truth is what brings us to Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter, or well, the book of Philippians, put it that way, the book of Philippians is actually a thank you note uh, from the Apostle Paul. He, he had received a gift of some sort from this body of believers, and he's simply writing them to thank them for it. It's very apparent when you read all this, little, this little epistle that the, that the Philippian church had played a big part in Paul's ministry. Uh, they had helped him in some practical way, some material gift, some of wonder. Maybe it was money, maybe it was goods and food or maybe a combination or, or of all of that. But in verse number 10 of Philippians chapter 4, there's this exuberant feel of, of gratitude. Uh, and he says, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. But he says, because your care of me has flourished. He's bragging on these folks for, for seeing to the needs, being so gracious uh, to provide for his needs. And you read verses 14 through 18, and you'll see that he He's grateful for, for the love that was expressed in their provision and their giving to him and taking care of him. And, and his prayer is that, that them as the givers, that they would be blessed, that they would receive a blessing in response to that. In verse number 17, he, he, he views their gift to him as an investment in his ministry that would, that would bring about spiritual dividends. And he recognizes their great sacrifice in verse number 17 of Philippians chapter number 4, 
He goes on, he says, I'm not because I desire a gift, but I desire that they may abound to your account. He prays and he recognizes their great sacrifice. He says in verse number 18 that he's received it as Epaphroditus, the things which were sent from you. He says an odor of a sweet-smelling sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. But then we come to verse 19. And as I said at the beginning, some of you, many of you, have, have adopted verse number 19 as a great life verse. And I, and I don't mean to, to take away from that. But if you don't read verse 19 in context to the verses around it, then it becomes one of the most uh, misquoted and one of the most misused verses in all of Scripture. Verse number 19 of Philippians 4 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that is a great promise to us. And we, we I love that promise, and it can be applied to our life under the right circumstances. Because when you read Philippians 4.19 in, in context with the verses around it, you come to realize that this verse wasn't written to the world at large. It wasn't written to the church at large. It was written to those that were directly, every day, involved in meeting the needs of others. He's writing a word of, of hope and a word of promise to these folks that were clearly very sacrificial in their giving. Those that had a bigger purpose recognized a purpose bigger than themselves. So the purpose of, of Philippians 4.19 comes right on the heels of him describing faithful giving, faithful stewardship. The promise of Philippians 4.19 the promise to that group of people, a very specific group of people living in Philippi, the church that he was that he loved and had took care of his needs. It's a promise to those believers that had been faithful to the Lord. Those that had been faithful towards Paul, specifically, towards his work and his ministry. And it's because they had given of themselves. It was because they had given of their material resources, paid it back into kingdom work even to the point at times it almost reads in places that their very livelihood was endangered because of their sacrifice. It's in response to that heart set, in response to that mentality that Paul promises them, that God promises to meet their every need. And see, it's so easy for us to take this verse out of context. And I've heard it like you have. There's, there's folks around us that would use that and, and to, to say, hey, if you pour into this ministry, then God's going to bless you. If you send yes, your money to this TV preacher, or if you send your money into this, then God will forth, he'll pay that back into your life. God shall supply all. I don't think that's the application here. But we've all used it in, in, in other ways in our lives. It's easy for us to take it out of context and say to ourselves or, or say to our family and our friends that are struggling don't worry, after all, God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And again, please, let, let, let me quickly, quick, 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 quickly clarify right there that in a broad, in a, in a glorious sense, God has promised to meet the needs of his people. Jesus says that in Luke 12. Go look at Luke 12, verses 27 down through around verse 30, 31. That's that great passage where Jesus is talking about the lilies how they grow, they don't toil and they don't spin. And But Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like any of these. And he talks about the grass and, and how the field. And then he goes on to say all of the name. He says, but God shall provide for you. Note you, he says, not to worry. Seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink and be of a doubtful mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your father knows you need these things. But he says, seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. You see the connection? Paul is bringing a promise into the lives of the Philippian believers that Jesus had brought into the lives of all of us as disciples. If I seek after the kingdom of God, if I'm sacrificially given of my time and my, my finances and my treasures and my, my skills, then my God shall supply all your needs. Philippians 4.19 is a promise that is very, very specific, and you need to know it today. 
And again, if I taint your, your understanding of this verse from this day forward, then that needs, that's God's will for you today. That's what you needed to learn. But Philippians 4.19 needs to be viewed as a promise to those that are faithful and to those that are devoted in their giving to the kingdom of God. And he says, when you do, then you'll have your needs met. So with that in mind, let's break down this promise and look at the glorious truth that can be drawn from it. There's three little points I want you to see and I'll let you go. There's, there's three points in Philippians 19. First of all, is the source of the supply. Paul says, my God shall supply. There's the supply of our needs. We're talking about a fountain that never runs dry. We're talking about a bank that will never fail. Romans chapter 2, verse number 4, speaks of the riches of his goodness. You need to withdraw from time to time on the goodness account. Tap into that account and draw from that account. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, Paul speaks of the riches of his grace. Amen. That's another bank account we can tap into. Drawing from the, from the grace account. You have access to that account, you know, through and by the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary's old rugged cross. Philippians 4.19, though, says it's all about his glory, his riches in glory. So there's a glory account, there's a grace account, there's a goodness account that each of us as children of God have access to. And the source of all of that, Paul says, my God shall supply. So there's the source. Look at the scope of those needs. My God shall supply what? My God shall supply all your needs. In, in order to, to avoid the most common abuse of this verse, you need to distinguish between wants and needs. <laughs> Careful right there. Because you you as parents and grandparents, you've taught that to your children all their lives. They'd come to you and say, I need a new pair of shoes, or I need... $20. I need this. And we've taught them all of their lives. Honey, you need to know the difference between a want and a need. But can we all not agree that we as adults have the same tendency? We all have the tendency to confuse wants and needs. Sometimes what we think is a need is not a need at all. And what sometimes we think we want has a tendency to turn into greed. And God promised to supply all of your needs and not all of your greeds. So I think that's a lesson that we all continue to learn no matter how old we've gotten. He loves to meet our needs. And he doesn't limit them to just three, like a genie in, in a lamp, like Aladdin's genie. What does he say? My God shall supply all your needs. So there we have the supply. We have the scope. And now look at the standard of, the, of, of his glory, the standard of his supply according to his riches in glory. I love that phrase. When Paul says riches in glory, he, he, he's talking about, it almost sounds like he should say, he, it almost sounds like he's putting God's blessings somewhere high above our reach, according to his riches that are in glory, which makes it sound unaccept, un, un, um, accessible to us. But then he adds, in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a great connector to us? According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, he brings those riches, those blessings down amongst us. If we are in him, then we are right beside the treasures that God wants to pour into our lives. All I have to do is put out my hands and take those blessings, take those gifts that is lying there. He wants to pour into my life as long as we're in Christ. If we are in Christ, then those blessings are at our disposal. So can God really meet all of your needs? Yes, he can. Jesus answered to getting the needs met in your life. Part of the answer can also be found in Mark chapter 11, verse number 22, where Jesus said to those disciples, have faith in God. We serve a great God, dear friend. He's my God. He's the source of my needs, able to meet all of my needs in Christ Jesus, he's the only satisfier of our soul. Like the songwriter said, he is all I need. When I need someone to talk to, you'll, you'll find no contentment. You'll find no true lasting satisfaction anywhere else in anything else. Anything else is at best a poor substitute. Try, try to imagine, if you can, a, a lake that's, that's tucked away back in the hills somewhere and how that, that lake 
could pour blessings and fertility into the barren, dusty land around it if there was just a way to find a channel out into those fields that desperately need it. But unless there's a river flowing out of it, unless there's a channel of blessings flowing out of that, those landlocked waters are good of use to nobody. Might as well be dried up. That's the same way it is with the blessings of God. The channel by which the boundless supply is to reach us, Paul, Paul breaks it down clearly, distinctly identified here. All of the riches of glory are supplied for you in Christ Jesus. So don't, don't, I hope I don't change your mind about what a great verse Philippians 4.19 is, because it truly is an encouraging verse. I don't want you to read it any differently and, and not be encouraged by it, but just read it in context. Read it in the context of Paul is talking to that, that my God shall supply all of your needs, but he's talking to specifically to people that have been faithful and are striving to, to be all that we need to be in the kingdom of God, sacrificially given to him. And when we do that, when we're living that kind of a lifestyle, then, uh, then he promises to supply all of our needs. I don't usually sing two songs, but I want to sing you a song that comes directly from Genesis chapter 22, verse number 14. As Abraham is on Mount Moriah, he coins a new name for Almighty God and calls him Jehovah Jireh because God has supplied all of his needs. Let me sing this chorus for you, then I'll let you go. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. I like this. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He has given angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He has given angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares Have a glorious weekend. Join us Sunday morning. If you can be with us live at the church at 9 and 11. If you can't make it at 9 and 11, you join us at the 11 o'clock hour for our live stream of Sunday morning at New Salem. God bless you. I love you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.